you see how it, how it works with the <laughs> autocorrelation and and how we generated autocorrelation and how that goes into the autocorrelation function and how that then produces the coefficients of the autocorrelation function mostly in many cases we just worry about the lag one and maybe lag two and so on but but it's it's, it's usually that and and just a question again if you see this number what's the nature of the time series you remember there was two types of time or three types of time series three natures of time series okay so so we had three we had random we have trending and mean and reverting mean reverting and what do we see here mean reverting exactly because it's negative but we've also got some trending elements in there so if we look We've actually got at a leg five, six, seven here. We've got a fairly strong trending element as well. And then at leg nine, we also got some trending element. Mm -hmm. So we've actually got a mixture of mean reversion and trend, which is usually how this stuff looks. And it's fairly complex. So there is a bit of structure in there, but it's not as easy to understand structure. It's, it's complicated, but it's good to understand what mm -hmm. this is i'd have a question then to that so could we say when when we say mean reverting it's it's kind of minus and trending it's it's positive it's plus what is random then below the statistical significance it's just random oh, okay basically. so it does have a bit of structure the question is then can we use some smart trading strategy to exploit that structure that's the issue here all right what's most important here is to understand the nature of those. So what we can then do is we can actually use functions that fit an ARIMA model to our time series. It's effectively that are in the ARIMA model, but I don't want to go too much into this. To be honest, I never use ARIMA models. And there's another one, there's one for volatility as well, which is called GARGE, General Autoregressive Heteroscedasticity. <laughs> it's a great word. I don't really use, but sometimes they are implicitly assumed. So, for example, technical indicators assume implicitly that we have this type of autocorrelation in our system. So they are important in what they're doing, even if you don't use those models directly. It's, it's good to understand the structure in such a time series. All right. So that's all I wanted for this. Now, the other thing is probably even more interesting. <laughs> what is the optimal betting fraction to basically maximize our returns and actually that's surprisingly simple to solve so first of all we need the spy close dot pct change and we just drop these again right so now we have our returns of the s p 500 okay now we want to know what is the optimal fraction to invest to maximize our returns? Let's just say we always bet our full full amount of money, our full portfolio. How would we calculate our return? I mean, we would have to compound it in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And How do we do that? Do you remember? With the cumulative product? Yes. See, what do we need to do when we use the cumulative product? on returns so so if we use the cumulative product on this uh what's gonna what's gonna happen Let, let's just do this cumulative product yeah and then we just plot this yeah so look it just goes straight to zero and stays there so what's the problem here because we have like only zero point something percentages so we need to add one to it oh. in order to get something that looks good what yeah. do we need to do you remember i know that it was like one plus yeah it's one plus and the way we can do this in a data frame is we just go add one and then we run it and there we go now when we do this what we're basically assuming is we are always fully invested in our portfolio now the question is if we weren't fully invested you know maybe we can maximize our outcome by not being fully invested because as you know when we do this with the coin toss, yeah, we need 
about 2%, you know, if you have a 51 to 49 probability of heads and tails, we need a 2% investment to maximize our final returns. Now, in this case, that's obviously not the same, right? It's, it's different. But the question is, what is it? And one way to do this is through a simulation, and we could call this a brute force optimization. So what we can do is we can actually multiply our returns and instead, like, you know, we have add, but we could also do mol, right? So what we do is we multiply our returns with some fraction f. And then instead of using the cumulative product, we just get the final product. Yeah. So let's just say f equals one, you know, it's a 360%. Yeah. So each of our returns is multiplied by some fraction. Let's just say f is 0 0.5. One point nine nine, yeah. Now you go well. Well, we just have to multiply it higher and higher, you know, and we get more and more. Well, is that really true? 